Washington Journal starts live at 7 Eastern here on C-SPAN. The spiritual leader of the American Society of Muslims announced his resignation Sunday after more than three decades. Imam W. D. Muhammad talks about Islamic life in America at the Society's annual convention in Chicago. This is 40 Minutes. Thank you. We praise the Lord, creator of the heavens and the earth. We praise him. We worship him only. We obey him and we obey his messenger, the last prophet, Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is the traditional salute to him, saying the prayers and the peace be upon him. And what follows of that traditional salute, dear Muslims, dear believers, brothers and sisters, again, peace be unto you. Assalamu Alaikum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The praise and the thanks is to God, the Lord, keeper of all the worlds. <clears throat> Let me quickly try to take some tension out of the air. <laughs> we who believe in this religion, we believe in God, and we believe in Muhammad the prophet, the model of the human being in his perfection as a servant of God. We, <clears throat> we believers, we know our life. We know our life. And we know what is not our life. And we know our religion. And we know what is not our religion. And we keep our life. And we keep our religion. Other things can come and go, but we keep our life, that is our religion, we keep our religion. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting ready to be more, be, be, be more at work, to do more, to be more productive, and to contribute to the good life of the believers that I have a common history with, and also to the good life of believers that I don't have that common history, history with. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I don't know about you, but when I told the imams of my resignation yesterday, a big burden went off my back. Yes, so I hope, I hope that gave you a little relief. Yes. Praise be to Allah. How Muslims are to plan our life. We are to plan our life knowing firstly that Islam is our life. And without Islam we don't have any life. And we are to contribute to the excellence of America because this is where we live, this is where we're going to stay, this is our country and we have made great progress in this country after being put down lower than the animals of this land. The vision of our founding fathers, they, some of them were influenced. After they read the Quran, they were influenced in a good way to become even better visionaries after they read the Qur'an, after they got familiar with the Qur'an and our prophet Muhammad, his history of how he accomplished so much in about 10 or 11 years and how he worked for about 21, 20 or 21 years and accomplished so much not only for Muslims but for the whole of mankind. As God says, مَا أَرْسَلْنَاهُ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً 
ما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين that god says he was not sent to be any but a mercy to all the worlds <clears throat> then if we follow him shouldn't we want to see mercy to everybody shouldn't we want to see everybody having mercy of god the mercy of god yes we should so the vision of our founding fathers is not so far from us. Uh, president, one of the presidents of these United States, it is documented that he read the Quran uh, himself. He read the Quran and he had the courage or the goodness to put, put it in writing that he read the Quran. And I have met presidents in my time very recently uh, I have met presidents in my time uh, who have expressed reverence and deep respect and reverence for our holy book, the Quran, and for the tradition, uh, the life of Muhammad the prophet. Uh, so uh, we don't live in a world of uh, ignorant people. Our leaders are great people in this country. Our presidents and our leaders of our society are great people and they do respect great things. We don't always know that, but they do. I'm a witness that they do respect great things, and they respect Islam, and they respect our holy book, they respect the last prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him. <clears throat> this country welcomes us to diversity. All the other groups that have come, before us. They came here because they were welcome. The idea of freedom for this society welcomes all people if they want to start their life over again. If they want a chance to live their life free of being persecuted, then America says, here is a place for you. Now we know our history, we know how we ourselves were persecuted, and we know religion has been persecuted too. In America, religion has been persecuted. But <clears throat> that was not something that was called for by the Founding Fathers. The Founding Fathers planned the future of this society so that it would become a welcome place for all people having good intentions and wanting to establish their life after being denied their freedom that freedom in their own lands or in their own country. <clears throat> so we have to ourselves then appreciate this diversity and <clears throat> be supporters of this diversity. Islam, in Islam, God says to us, La ikraha fid deen, that is, let there be no forcing people in the religion, no compulsory, no forcing people in religion. Don't force people in religion. Says the way is clear, whoever wants the way take it. Whoever is not wanting the way, then let him be free to reject it. This is Islam, <clears throat> not imposing our way on other people. Then we shouldn't try to promote our interests uh, uh, and uh, put down other people or try to have some plan to defeat their interests or to kill their life that they have chosen to have in this land of opportunity. We should respect all people who come here, who want to have their life. We are latecomers. So we should study the history of this diversity, the history of the people that came here to have their life free and be not so that they won't have to be afraid of rulers, of tyrants who would take their freedom from them. So we, if we are going to enjoy, Muslims, if we are going to enjoy the same freedom here, then the first thing we should do is have at least our imams, our teachers, our leaders, knowing the history of this diversity so that we will appreciate it and support others in having the same freedom that we want for ourselves. I repeat, our religion, Islam, is our life. While planning our life, we are to keep 
our plan in line with the Quran and with the tradition of the tradition tradition of the life of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayers and peace be upon him uh, in order to be successful as a Muslim society or Muslim community uh, planning our life here in America we must know the Quran better we must know the life of Muhammad better because we will be forming something un-Islamic if we don't form it in accordance with the teachings of the Quran and the life of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're in Chicago. I know a lot of you have heard things about old Chicago like you've heard things about the old West. You're in one of the best cities we have in these United States. In fact, I think it is the greatest. It might have some small towns with about 70 people in it, or maybe 700 in That's better as, as an environment. But uh, you're still gonna have to leave that small town and go to a bigger town. So come to Chicago anytime you like. You can have an invitation from me, ma'am, Radithu Dean Muhammad, W. Dean Muhammad. We must understand also that our life is to be established in community and it is to be established as community life. Individuals' life depend upon community life. I remember studying the writings on uh, uh, how people, human beings that is, individuals, uh, must have the, uh, the freedom and opportunity to interact with other human beings, grow up in a human environment in order to become human. Isn't that something? If you don't have that, then if you are left without human, a human environment in the wilderness, they documented this. They found a boy. They called the boy. The boy was like an animal. When they found the boy, the boy was like an animal, thinking itself one of the animals uh, because that boy had not the opportunity to live and interact with other human beings. So Allah didn't create us to be alone. Allah created us to be in community life. And if you want to progress economically or business uh, financially, or business-wise or financially, you need each other. You need each other, you need community. So God gave us the concept that will satisfy all of our needs as individuals on this planet. That concept is community life. And God says of us, you are the best community, uh, of the best communities evolved for the good of all people. The best of communities evolved for the good of all people. <clears throat> we must also understand that our community, because we are a minority in America, we are not the whole society, we are small part of this society. Our community exists in the environment of the bigger community that surrounds all of us, that is, or engulfs all of us, that is the community of the American people, mostly Christians. Others are increasing in number here that belong to other religions or other persuasion, other spiritual persuasions, but uh, the majority are Christians. So we are most likely going to have Christians as our, as our neighbors. I have a Christian, I don't know if he approved me giving his name, he's Mr. Thomas. He's Mr. Thomas. He has two names from the Bible. He's Mr. Isaiah Thomas. Uh, 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 and uh, I've lived as his neighbor now for several years and I trust him with my life just like I trust my life with the best of you. And he's a good Christian, a good church-going Christian. So we are to recognize our neighbors and follow Muhammad's advice to us, be aware of our neighbor, and be also always ready to assist your neighbor when your neighbor is in need. This is the teachings of Prophet. By me living that, thank you, thank you.
By me living that with my Christian neighbors, I have, I have the best Christian neighbors. I have the best. They only want to know if you're good and if you mean them well, you know? If you're gonna be good by them, if you care about them. If you let them know that, then you'll see love come out of them that you don't see come out of a lot of Muslims. Now, I'm a good doctor. I can heal some of you Muslims if you let me. <laughs> and we are also in the global community. We are part of the whole community of mankind, the international community of people. We are in that context too. So we must, must also be aware of that and draw from our religious teachings, draw from the Quran and draw from the life and teachings of Muhammad the prophet so that we will be successful in embracing mankind, citizens of the United States of America, near and far, and winning the friendship of the good, healthy-minded people so that we will have more freedom in this land to prosper. Freedom is offered to everybody that comes here, and you're free. But you have to plan your freedom. If you don't plan your freedom, freedom will destroy you. As so many out there in the streets that are destroyed by the freedom, as they perceive freedom, that freedom that they perceive is destroying them. We don't want freedom to destroy us. We want freedom to give us more opportunity to live our life of health and productivity. We thank God, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Again, we must be also appreciative of people who open their doors to us. Now, we know times have changed, so it's no big thing that we are having this meeting here, our annual public ad uh, address here at the UIC Pavilion. That's, this is no big thing. But in a way, it is a big thing, too. When you look at the fear that's in the air because of the things that's going on in this world and how Muslims are characterized by some of the things that Muslims are doing, you must also agree with me then that it is a big thing that we are having this meeting in this pavilion. Now, we Muslims are to see that our community life is not without good leaders. People complain, oh, this place is bad, and oh, this message ain't, 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 ain't like it should be. This imam, he should do this. Complain to everybody but the right person. Complain to him. <laughs> Hold your leaders responsible. This is Islam. Allah has taught us with the Quran and Muhammad that when judgment day come, every people will be gathered together with their imams, with their leaders. You're going to be gathered before the, for the judgment and your leader is going to be with you so that they will be a witness against you or for you and you will be a witness against them or for them. And the prophet says, said, peace be upon him, he said, religion is sincerity. And they asked, to explain him to further explain. And he said, the sincerity of a leader toward his following, and sincerity of a following toward the leader. So to be sincere with leaders, your leaders, you have to be truthful with them. You have to not talk behind their back what you can't say to them before their faces. And for them to be sincere by you and with you, they have to not put their government jobs before your interests. So you are free 
as Muslims and you're free as Americans to choose the life you want. So you need to choose leaders who love believers and whose life that they're living, whose behavior that we're looking at, tell us they love believers. You need to choose leaders, imams, who love obedience to God and who love respect for God and love respect for the God-given dignity of the God-given, quote, in the Quran, honor, end quote, the God-given honor that every human person should be respected for having, whether that human person respects that honor that God has given them or not. We should not be the one to disrespect the honor that God has created for them. We should call them back to the honor if they are ignorant of it. Call them back to the honor that God created them for. But don't, us, don't let us disrespect that honor. Respect everybody. And that ain't the first time you heard that. My father told you to do that. Education, Muslims must understand that education enables man to make progress in big, big measures. Without it, you make progress in little, small measures. Look at the societies before modern history. Look at the societies that didn't have education, that, was, that were not devoted to science, or not devoted to industry, not devoted to knowledge. Look at them in history and you'll see how small their contribution is to mankind. Then look at those who have the appreciation for science, appreciation for industry, appreciation for education, and look at the big world that they have created for mankind. So you must support education. You must have a respect for education and you must support it even if you're poor. Support it with your mouth, with your lips. Give support with your mouth, with your lips for education, even if you're poor and ignorant. Isn't that how our parents from slavery and our parents from the South, when the North was open to them and they had to leave the South to make progress, isn't that what they told their children? And then they pressed upon their children. Now you might do very well up north, but get an education. You owe it to me, son, and you owe it to your grandfather who's gone, or you owe it to your grandmother who's dead in her grave to get yourself, you're free and we were not, get yourself a good education. And with that encouragement, the early history of our people after freedom from physical bondage, from slavery on the plantations, <coughs> is a history of the rise of intellects, the rise of brilliant men and brilliant women who were our leaders and who made great progress for us in that time immediately after slavery up until the Civil Rights Movement, up until the Civil Rights Movement. Then the movement changed from one of an academic movement, an academic an academic supported movement, it changed from that to a political movement, a movement for civil rights. We have to keep history in our view. You know, the teachers under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they used to say, history is best to reward all research. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's ministers and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad were speaking mostly to a, a congregation, nationally and locally, a congregation that was almost 100% illiterate. Yes, we weren't intellectuals. We were trying to learn how to read. And we had programs for adults and children under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's uh, leadership to teach adults and children how to, lead, how to read. In fact, you couldn't even become a member until you wrote correctly a letter requesting to be a member. Is that not so? <clears throat> yes. 
That was to emphasize and make, it, make you know that it's very important that you become literate. That man wanted us to succeed. I'm speaking of the teacher of my father, the one that he called God in the person, in the flesh. That man wanted us to succeed. He didn't want us to fail. And he knew that to succeed, you must appreciate knowledge. You must want to become literate. So let's not forget that and let us go back to putting importance on things like it's supposed to be put on things and putting importance on things that are more important than others, put more important on those things and less important on those things that are lesser uh, uh, in, uh, in importance. So your leaders must be encouraged to support private schools. The more we live on this planet, in these times, things have changed. Trends are different. The more we support private schools, the more we prepare our community, not just ourselves and our children, the more we prepare our community to prosper in the future, to prosper in the future. More and more, we're going to see government burden financially to finance our public schools. And we're going to see society growing in numbers and growing in problems, just like it is now. It's not going to change. It's going to continue to grow in numbers and grow in problems. The problems of living in these big cities is going to get greater, greater and greater. It's going to take more and more tax money, government funding, to, to, to uh, keep civilization, to keep some sign or some sanctuary of civilization. <coughs> so <coughs> we have to be able to Look into the future. Our leaders, you're reading, you're literate. Look into the future. See what the future has in store for us. And you'll see that if you want to be successful, you have to put important, more important on education. You're, you're now being challenged by newcomers who come here and they score higher on the test than average Americans score. So the, so the American public of yesterday is challenged by newcomers today to even appreciate knowledge more and devote yourself more to academic achievement. If you don't, you're going to find yourself way behind them. And maybe that's God's plan, I don't know, <clears throat> but I know I'm not going to believe it until I, I can't do anything about it. I'm going to try to do something about it. And the way we do something about it is prepare for it now. Support our private schools. We need private schools. These public schools can't teach us Islamic life. Even if they hire a Christian or a Jew, or even a, a Muslim, to work in the public school and teach us Muslim life, Islamic life, <coughs> you'll be better off having your own Muslim school doing it, because that situation will not give you what your own situation will give you. I was told by an FBI who was questioning me during troubled times for the Nation of Islam, <clears throat> and I had been excommunicated, I had been put out. So he, he was questioning me, <clears throat> and uh, he was asking me questions about my father. He took over the conversation and started telling me things about my father. Well, I know they better information getters than I am, you know, so he, he didn't shock me at all. So he said, your father didn't just give money to Muslims. He said, your father gave money to needy Christians also. And I, I, I hesitated and I thought a little bit. And, I, and, and, and a, a couple of uh, uh, scenes came back to my mind, and I saw my father in the dining room at the table, and I recall him saying that he had sent some money to some Christians who needed some help. Uh, so I told him, I said, yes, I said, I'm aware of that. After I hesitated for a few, few a couple of minutes, I said, yeah. I said yes, I'm aware, aware of that. Maybe it was just 15 seconds. It seemed like it was a long time, though. I hesitated. Uh, probably 15 seconds. So I hesitated, and I told him, I said, yes, I am aware of that. Yes. All right. When we plan our life, and especially our schools, we should plan these schools so that we help Muslim children not only attending our Muslim schools, but Muslim 
children who are in public schools. We should have a program also for Muslim children who are in public schools so that we assist them with their courses, with their subjects that they're having difficulty with. So we need to give them tutorial help to help them, to help them make better grades in the public school. We can do that. That, doesn't, that won't cost us a whole lot. So while, while we are not able to provide enough schools, or enough quality schools, to take care of all of the children of our parents, let us assist those parents with their children who are attending, children that are attending public school, by offering a program for them too, where they can get Islamic education on the weekend, and where they can get assistance, tutorial help, during the week and on the weekend. Community life is the full life, complete life. Community life is the full life, it's the complete life. Community life is where <clears throat> you can have full expression for your life, your whole life, where you express your spiritual life, and that's number one. You go and join your brothers and sisters on Friday, the Juma prayer, and you go and join them at any, any time uh, that you can, that's possible for you. You join them in the five daily prayers as a group and you pray with your brothers and sisters. This is the spiritual life, yes. And <clears throat> you work to improve your financial situation so that you can help that spiritual life. Don't you know if spiritual life didn't need help, God wouldn't have put it in a body? God put it in a flesh and blood body. My spiritual life can't communicate to you except through this instrument, my flesh body. It needs it. Take away this flesh body, I can't reach you with any communication. Some people believe they can, but that's spooky. <laughs> yes, so value this physical body and know that the physical body that you live in is a sign from God to you that as you need a, a house for your own soul, your community life needs physical structures for you to express your life in and express your life upon and by. Yes, you need stores, you need businesses for business life. You need cultural centers, centers for cultural expression, for weddings, for child celebration, for new birth celebrations, etc. cetera, for, for plays that will instruct the people to have the good life. You need this. So how, no wonder they call us spooks. We don't have a body out here in the world. While mentioning culture, I want to mention to you something that really made me feel sad. And that was, I thought when I went to speak at the Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York, that that I was still speaking, I would be speaking, pardon me, in a facility that was owned by Percy Sutton family, his, his uh, business partners and his family, his family. Percy Sutton is African American of prominence, political, political figure, a great political figure in the, in the uh, after uh, Adam uh, Clayton Power and uh, well-respected person and still is deserving of that respect. But somehow the management of that theater didn't go well for him, and they lost the Apollo Theater. And then we, we rented it, they told me that we were renting it from a Jew. Now, not, that, that's not to say that that's bad, you know, maybe it's better that we were renting it from a Jew. Sometimes it's better that a Jew is doing business with you. I've had some good Jews to, to open up opportunities for me. Yes, I have. When I didn't have a job, I had a Jew to befriend me. So uh, this, this old idea that all Jews are like those that used to be in Jewtown, you know, cheating us and robbing us, uh, telling you to tell you, how you like that suit? I remember this. Say, look in the mirror, look in the mirror. And he, he, got, he, got, he got a hand full of the suit, holding it like this, so it looks real neat and tight in the front. But you don't know that, oh, you, you just feel it, oh yeah! You get home, man, you wanna go back there and kill that Jew. 
So we have a lot of bad experiences with Jews, but that was a certain group of Jews who were hungry in hell, you know? And they were the poor Jews of Jewtown, the marketplace called Jewtown. <laughs> but you could get some good hot dogs there. Yeah, I'm telling you, some good hot dogs. Chicago-style kosher hot dogs, man, they're all right. My son say, Daddy, don't say hot dog. He say, I don't like that expression. I say, what should I say, son? He say, say Franks. <laughs> We're hearing a lot of talk about the one world order. Now we know people will look at the one world order differently. I guess the president and our state department, when they think about the one world order, I'm sure they're thinking about how the, the business life of the planet Earth is becoming one system now, just one life system. Uh, it's no more like it used to be. Each country having its separate economy and working separately and not interacting uh, really knowing its dependence on the other economies. But now that's gone, that time is gone. So we do have one world economic order. And I'm sure that we would like to improve uh, the political order and we'd like to see uh, uh, the political units, or that is the nations, the separate nations of our planet uh, coming together to cooperate with each other for the good life, for peace, and the good life of all of us, of all nations. But I don't know if that's what they have in mind uh, uh, for the uh, political order. I don't know. But I do believe it's that. I know one thing. I served as a, a member of a special committee serving the president during the time of the Democrats in the White House, uh, President uh, Clinton. And uh, I was working directly with the State Department uh, at that time, and I was given that opportunity by the going out uh, uh, Secretary of State, uh, and uh, he saw that I was in before the next Secretary of State came in. But our work didn't really start until the next Secretary had been established in that position. And I do have experience that tells me that the United States government, under the President of these United States, is very much interested in seeing peace and justice uh, for all people, for all nations in the world. Now, that is interfered with by private interests. Private interests makes it very difficult for any government to achieve all it wants. Uh, but again, we must understand our responsibility to not only contribute to our own government, or to our own community government, and don't, don't think you don't have a government. A Muslim community must have its own government. Its government is seen in its organization and in its leaders. That's your government. Your government, the religious government, is seen in its organization and in its leaders. If the organization is good and the leaders are good, you have good government. Uh, and our government lives under the uh, protection uh, have the protection if we live with respect for others, our government, our religious government, has the protection of the, of the government of these United States. And we should be obligating ourselves as much as other Americans obligate themselves to contribute to this government to make it better. If we are not pleased with it, let us be as other free Americans who are self-assertive, aggressive, and who appreciate their freedom and know that they have the right to influence the shape and the future or the course of their government. Let us be as energetic, as enthusiastic, and as responsible as they are. Let us join them in working to make our government better, <coughs> have our government better for all of us. I was reading in the Quran, I'm a student of the Bible too. I'm a very good student of the Bible. Some of you preachers would be surprised what I can share with you if you meet me in private. God has blessed me with understanding of the scripture 
and I thank God for it, and I would like to share with good people what God has blessed me with. Um, yes, so I read in the Bible about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and I read in the Quran about Jesus Christ, and I read how his disciples said uh, Jesus was calling for assistance, for people to help him, and his disciples replied to him, we are your helpers to God. We are your helpers to God. We are your helpers under God. We are your helpers for God. We are your helpers to bring God's cause to God, to bring it where he wants it to go, to take it where he, he wants it to go. Now, I firmly believe that African-American people have a history that justified God's intervention. I believe African-American people have a history that justified God selecting the best of us to lead us into a model life that will be a lot model life to help strengthen the faith and trust that is in people to make this world a better life, a better li world and a better life for all. You are chosen. Thank you. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. It's Book TV's fifth anniversary, and this fall, we have your favorite authors live every weekend. Look for in-depth interviews.